Hi guys, welcome to Learn Kenyan Law with Wanjiko. I am your host, Wanjiko Mwangi, and this is the podcast where you get to learn more on matters legal. And for today, we're going to be talking about the small claims court here in Kenya. And before I delve any deeper, I'm going to let our guest introduce himself. Karibu sana. Asante sana. My name is Bernard Dombo, a legal assistant for the past three years, dealing with all areas of law, including family, criminal, divorce cases, adoption, and even family law at large. Thank you so much, Bernard. And I like the fact that you have been dealing with this. Um, this is something that you've been around especially for the last three years. Yes, thank you. And we've said that today we're talking about the small claims court here in Kenya. Yes. And there's one quote that I really love when it comes to access to justice. I yes. normally say that, I normally love this quote because it, it states, denying access to justice is an injustice. Yes. So, of course, the provision of having a small claim court here in Kenya, I feel like that is a path to providing justice to our, our normal monarchy. Yes. So, educate us on, first of all, what is a small claim court? So actually, small claims court, When what comes to your mind when you first hear what a small claims court is? Let's, let's talk about its establishment first. Mm -hmm. now, the Small Claims Court Act, which was actually established in 2016, there's this section four of the Small Claims Court Act, which establishes a court known as a small claims court, which shall be like a subordinate court Pass one to Article 1691 of the Constitution. So, in other words, the Small Claims Court is actually like a subordinate court in that they've, they've just simplified its function to cover a large area and actually cover a large number of people who had different claims under the Small Claims Court. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so who heads this Small Claims Court? Who is the head of this court? Are we going to find a judge there? No, no, we can't, we can't find a judge in a small claims court. Being that the said court is a magistrate court, it's a subordinate court, it's headed by someone who actually acts as a magistrate, but in the small claims court, we call her or him as an adjudicator. Mm -hmm. Yes. So an adjudicator is the head of this court. Adjudicator is the head of the court. Is the one who adjudicates and actually determines all the claims and all the matter brought before him or her under the small claims court. Okay, so... um. What are the qualifications of this adjudicator? No, for you to head the for you to be the adjudicator in the small claims court, first you need to practice as an advocate for three years and above. That's one of the qualifications mm -hmm. for you to head a small claims court. Mm -hmm. Yes. So basically the same qualifications of a magistrate is what is applying for an adjudicator. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. So um let's also talk about the code of conduct that this adjudicator is expected to be having. Yes. What is the code of conduct that an adjudicator should be, you know, carrying out themselves? No, as an adjudicator, you're actually someone who has, like, you need, you need to conduct yourself in such a manner like anyone who's filing his claim under the small claims court will actually have confidence, like his matter will be heard in a manner, in an impartial manner, in that everyone in that case will actually find justice for his or her matter. Okay, so I like the fact that you've told us about the code of conduct for um this adjudicator. You said, of course, they're supposed to be impartial. They're supposed to also be independent. Of course, you've also talked about competency because you've told us about their qualification. Of course, you've also said about um impartiality and lawfulness and, of course, giving people um humane treatment when it comes to, you know, listening to their cases. Yes. So the next thing that I'd want us to talk about briefly is um, who's responsible for appointing these officers of the court and actually which other officers might we be having in this court? Now, we have the Judicial Service Commission. They are, res they are actually responsible for appointing the said adjudicators. They also appoint other staff who actually assist the adjudicators in performing their functions. We have the registrars who work hand in hand with the small claims court adjudicator in performing the said functions. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, the last thing that I want us to talk about when it comes to introducing small courts claim, small claims courts, is which language is used in these courts? We have the the common languages are English and Kiswahili, but that that does not limit it, that, that that does not limit ones who can't speak both languages to actually not file a case in the small claims court. The court also allow the use of other indigenous languages. Maybe you can speak in your mother tongue. You know, can actually speak the same in the small claims court while you take your matter there. And the court will have a translator who will translate that language in a manner that the educator, in any case, doesn't understand, will understand the language that you speak in the said court. Okay, so um, if I'm speaking probably um, Kikuyu, mm -hmm. I am able to get an interpreter. 
um, uh, if I'm speaking in other indigenous languages, I can still get someone who's going to convey the message that I have yes, to this the court. court. Have, yes, the court has a translators. In all the courts, there must be a translator who can translate any language that the person speaks and the court does not share that language. Okay, that's very interesting. Can you also talk about the, um, the deaf people, people who are blind, you know, people who are disabled? Let's talk a little bit about that, especially when it comes to the language of this court and the accessibility of this court. So in any case, where we have someone who is actually deaf, someone who can't speak, we have someone who maybe he cannot, like someone who is disabled, the court will also have a mechanism where someone who actually is deaf, the court will have a sign language interpreter who will be able to interpret to the court whatever that person is trying to communicate to the court. The person who is disabled does not mean that when you're disabled, you cannot approach the small claims court. The court has mechanisms under which a disabled person may be able to access the court and actually file his whole her own case in the small claims court. Okay, so at least um, it, it doesn't um, matter whether you speak English or Kiswahili, you can still access the small claims court. We've also talked about how the small claim court is competent. We've said that the adjudicator is really competent and of course their code of conduct is of the same rate as, um, to, to you know, the code of conduct of magistrates. Yes. Yeah, we've also talked about the establishment of the, um, the small claims court mm-hmm. and you've talked about the 2016 small claims court act. Yes. So I, I definitely feel like, you know, um, the small claims court has bridged the gap of, you know, um, yani it's bringing people closer to justice. For someone who thought that for me to go to court is such a big deal, it basically makes this not so big of a deal. Yeah, like for instance, you know, we can actually say, you know, before the establishment of the said court, we've had complaints, numerous people have been complaining that they've been failing their matter in other courts and the said is taking long for the said court to hear and determine the said claims. But now since the small claim court came into practice, we've had like so many matters had been, had been adjudicated and judgment have been given in a timely manner, in a very short period of time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you so much at least for giving us a brief introduction for the small claims court. Guys, our next episode is going to be about objectives. We're also going to later talk about the impact of these small claims courts. We also need to talk about the jurisdiction of these courts. And of course, we're also going to talk about the proceedings of the small claims court and the reasons you need to file your cases at the small claims court. But for now, as we always say, delay in justice is an injustice in itself. And I feel like the establishment of the small claims courts is a path closer to offering justice to us as Kenyans. For now, in case you have any questions, feel free to um, ask about it and we're ready to answer. That's it, guys. Bye.